I'm Reed Windmiller and I'm the builder of Boatswagen, my 1967 Silver Line. I started out in Volkswagens with a, started out the proper way, an 04 R32 that I was stupid and sold, but I had that for several years and that's where I got hooked on the VR6. It's a 17 foot uh, 1967 Silver Line runabout. So it started off life as a GM powered four cylinder with 120 horse. So when I got it, I, I tested it on land. Everything sounded fine. First time I got it in the water, it ran good for a little while and then slowly started getting worse and worse and making, starting to make some bad noises. I'm pretty sure it threw uh, or it spun a bearing. That's when I decided it was time to do something different. I started pricing four cylinder engines to replace it with and they were all 800 to a thousand dollars then. So I saw a VR6 for 400 bucks. I'm like, well, that's a lot cheaper. I could probably do it for 800 with all the other parts. It wasn't, that wasn't the case. <laughs> I spent a little more than an extra 400 on it. And the other thing too is so I, every time I got online trying to see if anybody's ever done it before, the common response was, yeah, it can't be done. You can't put a VR6 in a boat. That'll never work. <laughs> so that also gave me a little bit of motivation to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it just to prove everybody wrong. So spinning in the right direction is was key. Made sure it spun the same way as the GM motor, because if not, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be going into the outdrive correctly. That'd have to get like a reverse outdrive and that'd be a nightmare. So pulled the motor out and I cut a bell housing apart to use it for a template to make an adapter plate to go from the engine to the way the original motor mounted in there. There's no transmission. So how it works is there's a, I had a friend who does CNC and I had him make a, basically it looks like a, almost a cone, bolts directly to the flywheel from a manual transmission car. Off the end of that cone is the adapter that goes to the output shaft. So it uses a marine adapter. It's got a little rubber insert in it and metal splines. So it's got a little bit of give when you shift it in and out of gear. Getting the engine mounted, I had to build front legs basically for it that sit on rubber bushings, mount the motor to the floor of the boat, got it in just basically the exact same spot where the bell housing of the transmission mounts up for the, for the starter. So the starter could be in the right spot and the starter mounts to that then. And I had to get an, a Mark V R32 oil pan and oil pump because there wasn't enough clearance between the bottom of the engine and the floor, but the aluminum oil pan is about an inch shorter than a regular, I think this is a 95, 95 GTI motor is what this is. The exhaust was a key piece because it's, it's a water jacketed exhaust. So there's a two and a half inch inside diameter pipe that I welded together first. And then I came to the outside and used four inch pipe uh, stainless steel pipe and welded it to there. That way I could have water between the, uh, the two pipes to cool, cool the exhaust so it doesn't get hot in there. Very rarely do they dump outside of it. And I, I wanted to dump out the back, just not straight up because eventually I want to do a cover on this. To do the, going out the hall, you have to do it water jacketed. So then the exhaust, I, I got that all done and it didn't sound like a VR, it sounded like a tractor. It didn't sound the greatest. So I ended up making a couple different baffles. Uh, I welded up to put inside of there and the baffles actually gave it enough back pressure to make it sound proper. Had to sound like a VR if I'm putting it in there, not like a tractor. Water is cooled through a heat, uh, water to water heat exchanger. So I don't have to worry about Mississippi water getting into the engine and causing problems in there. Once it goes through the heat exchanger and cools the engine, it dumps into the exhaust to cool it off before it exits out the back of the boat. Volkswagen motors don't like uh, dirty fluids running through them. So yeah. I had to do that for sure. My main issue that I had was a vapor lock issue that I chased down for almost a year. I had the fuel line running back into itself instead of back into the tank. Once I ran it back into the tank, the uh, vapor lock issue went away and it could idle along just fine. So I've got the, I've got the stock ECM in there and I have basically the minimal amount of wires to make it run. I think there's about three or three to five. I did a uh, coolant pickup, but I haven't been able to get that to work. RPM pickup, it kind of works, but it's not, not accurate. Oil pressure, the oil pressure works. I was worried about that, but with the, uh, the baffles in the R32 pan, it keeps the oil from um, getting away from the pump as I get up on plane. 
Yeah, I haven't had a chance to figure out the correct voltages that they need to run out to read accurately. So right now they, they work, but someday they'll work accurately when I get enough time to figure out what the voltage is and what all they need to be. Oh yeah, it was, it was a lot of looking at a Bentley manual for hours and hours and hours and trying to figure out what the minimum I needed to make it run. Well, the other thing, I had to re redo the whole interior of the boat because I pushed the engine forward about six inches and so none of the seats would fit and all that. So I decided to build uh, bench seats in there to make it look a little more old school and kind of fit the style of the boat. So I had those all custom made. I built, I built the wood uh, frames and had them all cu uh, covered here in town. My memory on this build's a little fuzzy because I did it about 10 years ago and there was a lot that went on in it and a lot that I can't remember. And unfortunately that was before we had good cameras and on our, on our cell phones and I shot it all with a point and shoot. And it's kind of an ongoing project. I've, I've got it to this point to where it's reliable and I can take it out and enjoy it. I hope I'm looking for a place, a building big enough I can tear it apart and kind of rebuild the whole boat itself and then rebuild the motor properly, do all the wiring properly and make it look decent. Yeah, this year I bought an Eaton M90 supercharger and eventually that'll go on there to give it a little more, uh, a little better sound and a little more kick. So I started off with a, the propeller for the GM four cylinder and it was, a, it was like a 14 pitch. I think I have a 19 pitch on there now so I get a little more top speed out of it. It still comes out of the hole decent. The other propeller was just too shallow of a pitch and I'd get to max speed way too quick. So max speed uh, is somewhere around 35 miles an hour. The way I have the motor set up right now, it doesn't have the speed sensor going into the ECU. It has a soft limiter on it of about 5,200 RPMs if I remember right, and not the 6,000 that it normally has. So I could get more speed out of it if I would hook a speed sensor up to it, trick the speed sensor basically. I don't want to run the outdrive over, over the 5,000 RPMs that it's supposed to be maxed out at. I'd have to go to like a really high performance outdrive that would be a lot of money to be able to run the motor at full RPM. Not a high speed boat, never was meant to be a high speed boat. It's a good cruiser and it's really fun at that. So I had the heat exchanger custom built so it could handle this engine supercharged or turboed down the road in case I wanted to add more power to it. So it's it's way overcooled as it is now and it has no problem even on a 100 degree day. So the alternator is actually a marine alternator. I, I put that on there because I had plans and maybe still do it, uh, put a cover over the engine that will fits the style of the boat. The problem is we tend to walk across boats down here. We tie up in big string, strings and walk across the backs of them. And right now mine's kind of hard to walk across because all because there's not much area to walk across. So, But a marine alternator is needed because it won't spark. Sparking is kind of a big deal with boats. Uh, they tend to blow up when that happens. There'll be gas vapors that get trapped in there and then something will spark. Yeah, I built, I built it to be as much boat as I could be. I've got an inline fuel, uh, fuel pump that's also a marine grade one to keep, again, for no sparks. The only thing I couldn't change out was the, the starter, but the starter is fully sealed, so didn't have to worry about that. So yeah, I took the regular boat throttle and I ended up making a, a little box for it to go into because one was a push throttle and the other was a pull throttle. And so to be able to make a mount up, I had to make a little rocker, basically a little rocker arm for both ends to meet up to. So this is using the, the throttle cable and linkage from, a, from the GTI motor. And then it mounts into the box to make it adapt to the, uh, the boat throttle. Is it gonna be reliable? How many times are you getting stuck on the river? The engine's been stupidly reliable. It's the, the fuel system that I screwed up on and the, the wiring's been a little eh because I need to get it properly um, spliced. And No, I've always been able to get it started up and running again. I've, it's never left me stranded, I've never needed a tow. It's the best way to get uh, Volkswagen noises in my life right now. Uh, not able to have room for a, a VR in my life car-wise because I just don't have the space for it. So this fits the need and it's something different and unique and it's quite enjoyable to take out and cruise around in. Thank <laughs> you.